Hey guys, this is going to be a quick tutorial on merging photos in Photoshop CS6. Our final product is going to look something like this. We have a cabin, a moon, a beach, clouds, and some glass. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up Photoshop. In this tutorial I'm using CS6. So now what you want to do is import your background picture. In this case I'm going to use the beach as my picture. Duplicate the layer so you don't mess it with the actual background. Now we want to get a rough view of what everything's going to look like. So import our clouds. And for this, we're going to put them in the sky. Just so to right above the horizon. Good. Now we want to put the moon in there. That looks just about good. Let's put it up there. Now let's put the cabin in there. Now you may look at this and be like, that looks terrible. Exactly, because we haven't started editing it. Select your moon layer. And for instance, go to the magic wand tool and click on the outside layer. And it will get everything except for the moon. Now you're going to delete this by clicking Command X for Mac. After you've rasterized the layer. Delete the outer layer so you just have the moon. That's good. We're going to clean everything up a little bit. Uh, and for the cabin down here, you have to do a little bit more. Make sure you rasterize the layer. And then go into the polygon lasso tool. And this is going to be very rough, so I'm going to speed through this. Okay, after you're done with the whole thing, right click and click select inverse and then command T to crop out the image. Now we're just going to take our eraser tool and erase all the unwanted areas with a hard brush. Okay, everything looks about good. Now, if you want, you may say you don't like the green here. There's two ways of doing this. Either lassoing it and then right clicking and fill. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. In that case it worked nicely. Now I don't like it over here, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click Command T, right click the picture, and flip horizontal. And then from here we're gonna drag it over to where we want it. I'm thinking right above out here would be good. And I'm also going to tr transform this just so it looks virtually decent. I'm going to make it longer. I'm also going to make it shorter. So it kind of fits in more. Okay. Now I'm going to work on blending because blending is a big part of these pictures. What you want to do on the moon is click on the moon and you want to basically make it hide behind the clouds. Lower the opacity of the moon so you can see where the actual cloud is. So we'll make it right here, it looks good. And to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to take a soft brush eraser tool. Make sure its hardness is set to 0% so it's very soft. And you're going to have the moon selected and take your brush and go in there and erase the portions where the clouds are. Now we're going to increase the opacity. Oh my god. And there'll be some blue seeping through, so let's just drag it over. Just to weave it so it looks virtually better. And then just erase portions of the moon that you think need to be erased. OK, 
Okay, so we're getting there, but now we need to blend this into the water so it doesn't look so weird. So with the same soft brush, just start, have your house selected and then start blending it in by erasing just the edges. Now you want to erase it up pretty high so it looks like it's in there. And then this over here, it, I don't like it because it's just kind of going into the land. So we're going to erase that to make it look like it's behind these rocks. And then just make it go up on land. Very nice. And smooth. So it's looking a little bit better. We have that, the clouds, the moon. Everything else, let's erase this over here. Now what we want to do is work on reflection, because this is water, and we don't have any reflection. So go to your cloud layer, and you're going to want to duplicate this. And from here, you're going to go Command-T, it's going to transform the image. Right click, and click Flip Vertical. It'll flip the picture upside down. Now what you want to do is you want to drag it down so that it's duplicating the picture you have on top. Well, we're going to offset this at an angle just a little bit. Now you want to lower the opacity so you can see what you need to erase. And of course you're going to have to erase dry as that layer. But we're going to erase all this over here and make sure you have a soft brush so everything flows together. Erase all the unnecessary spots that you don't want it to be reflecting. So now it's on the water. So it's looking better, but we want to do an overlay on this. Just so it blends in the water and it's not so like ambient. And you can mess around with the opacity if you feel like you need to. It just does different things. So I'm going to set it to around 20 to 30%. That looks good to me. Now what I want to do is we also want to put a reflection on the moon. So go to the moon, duplicate the layer, transform it, and flip it. Flip vertical. Now the moon is a little bit trickier because you have it right here. But even with, if you lower the opacity, it's still going to look weird. You know why? Because you have to add perspective to it. So go to command T, right click, and you're going to mess with all these things to get an effect you want. Uh, first off, I'm going to use perspective. You basically have to make the moon as if it was at an angle because you're on the water. Which is sometimes tricky to do. So I'm going to mess around with this right there it's looking a little bit better now I'm going to scale it okay and then I'm going to rotate it just a wee bit now I'm going to want to lower the opacity a lot and then I'm going to put darken on this darken will make it a little bit darker because it's a darker color Lower the opacity, or actually increase it to about like 36. And then from here, I'm going to want to put a filter on both the clouds and the moon. A ripple effect. And you want it to be very minute. Just so it looks like it's in actual water. And we want large size ripples and just get it so it looks like there's some blur to it looks like it's in the water because we'll give it the effect that we want it to same with the clouds and we have some clipping going on up here so we're going to erase all that
yeah, now it's slowly coming together. It's starting to look like a picture, but all these colors are completely different. So we're going to have to mess with hue and saturation to get colors that we want. So go to your cloud layer and go to image, adjustments, hue, and saturation. We're going to mess around with these settings to get a color that we want. We want to portray. I think this picture is more of a red, darker color. So let's try to get a dark hue. This is also just trial and error. Like you have to mess with settings to get the setting you want. Okay, that looks just about good of what I want to do. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your background layer and put it on top of the clouds. You know why? Because this sky looks pretty nice and we want it to blend through. So we're going to put a either a darken or an overlay. We'll probably do an overlay. So click on overlay and make sure it is above your cloud. So it kind of gives it the effect that it's merging the photos together and that's really nice. Now we can continue on editing the cloud with hue and saturation if you want. Increase the lightness or lower the darkness, whatever you want to do. We're going to make this a dark picture, so I lowered the lightness. I want to add more color, so I'm going to increase the saturation just a little bit. Now from you here, it's looking virtually a little bit better, but we still have this is off colored, so we're going to fix that right now. Go into hue and saturation for the house, and we're going to do the exact same thing we just did. And hopefully it looks good. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And then from here we have to just edit the moon now. So go to the moon that is in the sky. If that's not, that's in the water and this one's in the sky. Do the exact same thing. Image adjustments, hue and saturation. I'm going to make the moon look as however you want it. Darker because it's the moon. Now we want to blend the moon into the sky a little bit more because it honestly looks like it's just a 2D picture. So we're going to lower our eraser size and make sure that it's on a very soft brush. Hardness 0% and size just to blend it in. You're going to go around just the outside of your brush, but increase your brush size so it just fades out. Just go around the whole outside of the moon. And this will give it an effect that it's kind of like built into the picture. And you can also do blending options. Right click on your moon. And then click blending options. And you can mess around with this stuff. And then we're also going to add a gradient over this. But lower the opacity a lot. This will just give it an effect that it's more into the picture. You don't like that drop shadow. Okay, it's looking good now. But now we have to go to the background copy and adjust that hue and saturation. So it's more of an ambient red. You want to lower the whole lightness because it will give this whole thing a more surreal feeling. Now, I want to lower the brightness of the house too. So just go to image adjustments, brightness and contrast. Lower that a wee bit and jack up the contrast to bring out the lows. Virtually, it's coming along pretty good. Now, one thing I forgot earlier is the house reflection. So we're going to duplicate the house. And then Command T to transform it. Flip it horiz or flip it vertical actually, and make it come down in the water. And you're gonna wanna angle this in something like that amongst those lines. And all you have to do is lower the opacity, so you can see what you need to erase, and then erase all the unwanted areas. 
So now I'm going to put a filter on it. The ripple effect. Oh, excuse me. Okay, and two final effects that will make this picture just stand out there like nothing else. Go down here to the new layer tab. Click on new layer, and we're going to add a gradient on the moon. So go over here to your gradient tool. Make sure radial gradient is selected, and reverse is checked. So it's white to black, not black to white. Click the center of the moon and drag about out to here. And it looks like this little thing, and of course you can't see anything, and it's very important that your layers on the top of the um, layers. So lower the opacity probably about to 50%, and go to multiply. Here we go. Go to multiply, and lower the opacity probably... 20%, 28%. That will just add an effect that will make this thing stand out. Add another layer, and this layer is going to be cloud. So, what you want to do is you want to select a dark color in the sky for your background color, and then a lighter color for your foreground color. And then go to filter, render, clouds. And this is very, again, it looks weird, but do, go to overlay and lower the opacity probably to around. 45% looks good to me. And a few minor details if you want to get into it is um, select on your cloud copy in the sky and go over here to the dodge tool. And what this is going to do, it's going to make all the highlights um, come up. Make sure exposure is around like 20%. And then it's just going to highlight the clouds. And you want to be on mid tones because these clouds aren't too dark and they're not too bright. And this will just give an effect that the moon is in fact lighting things. And it just adds enough final effect, but it's very minute. You don't have to do it. Okay, now I think it is now time to add the chicken scratch, or whatever the hell you want to call it. Gonna put it over a picture like this and go to overlay multiply. Well, they pass you just a wee bit and we are finished. This is the final product, and of course, it's not as good as my first one I did, but this is just giving you techniques and tips to get from these to roughly this. And